Sega has recently announced that it is releasing a Mega Drive 2 Mini on October 27th, loaded with 50 games. During the announcement, Sega showed off 11 games that will be on the Japanese unit, which included Mega Drive, Mega CD, and even the SVP-powered Virtua Racing. Like the original Mini from 2019, this new unit is smaller, has HDMI output at 720p, and uses the USB interface for its controllers. Also announced for the unit was an add-on kit that gives you a tiny replica Mega CD2, a tiny 32X, a Virtua Racing cart, and a Sonic CD disc that sits inside the Mega CD. The full 11 games announced were as follows. Sylphie, the game art shoot 'em up that used a combination of polygons and pre-rendered backgrounds. Shining Force CD, a remake of the two Game Gear releases with additional content and upgraded sound and visuals. Sonic CD, Sega's take on a time-traveling little blue blur. Mansion of Hidden Souls, a full motion video ghost adventure about a brother rescuing his sister from a fate worse than death. Popful Mail, the side-scrolling action adventure with RPG elements. Virtua Racing, the SVP-powered arcade port that appeared on the Mega Drive in 1994. Bonanza Brothers, the two-player adventure where you must steal items and not get caught. Shining in the Darkness, the first-person RPG with great graphics and a solid story. Thunder Force 4, the legendary Technosoft shoot 'em up that looked as good as many Neo Geo titles. Magical Tarurutu-kun, or something to that effect, a side-scrolling action title from the makers of Pokemon. And finally, a brand new Mega Drive port of Fantasy Zone, the multi-directional arcade shooter starring Opa Opa. This one looked nearly perfect and a great complement to this device. Of the 11 games announced, there are some notable surprises. First, and I don't think I'm alone in this, the inclusion of Mega CD titles is huge. Sega has rarely even acknowledged the device ever existed, much less reissued many of its games. With roughly half of the announced games coming from the Mega CD, it bodes well that we'll see many more as the rest of the library is announced. Game Arts is obviously on board, so expect to see at least one of the Lunar games show up. Also of interest is Virtua Racing, which was a port of the Sega Model 1 arcade original. It used the SVP, or Sega Virtua Processor, an add-on accelerator chip that allowed the Mega Drive to render polygons much more efficiently. The very inclusion of this title makes you wonder what else Sega has to announce for the Mini 2. Fantasy Zone is also a rather interesting addition to the lineup. This game was not originally on the platform, which means Sega had it developed specifically for this product. That makes it something of a big deal for fans of the original arcade version. What is kind of strange is that they announced this already, instead of at the very end, which makes me think that we may see more of these types of special games. With developer M2 being fascinated with Sega's System 16 arcade technology, it stands to reason that we may see something like the original Shinobi show up. While I'm pretty excited for what was announced for this device already, the Mega Drive games so far come as little surprise. Sega owns Bonanza Brothers, Thunder Force 4, and Shining in the Darkness, but software from Game Freak probably means Sega has a number of third-party editions coming. Needless to say, I'm quite interested to see what the rest of the Mini 2 library consists of. That leads us to my best guess for what else we are about to see on the Mega Drive Mini 2. Going by the way the opening volley of titles were presented, it looks like we are going roughly half Mega CD titles, half Mega Drive titles, and a few odds and ends from there. That leaves us 39 games to speculate at, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. 
As you may expect, I am going to avoid the vast majority of licensed content. If it's based on a movie or an extremely hot IP, I just do not feel Sega will go after it. With that said, the following games are what I think we are going to see on the Mega Drive Mini 2. So sit back and relax, and let's play Guess That Game. Afterburner 3 is one of those games you want it to be good, but it just didn't use the Sega CD in any meaningful way. Sega can get this one easily though, so I expect to see it on the Mini 2. Bari Arm, also known as Android Assault, is a long shot, but I think it's good enough that Sega might actually go after it. It's one of the better looking shooters on the Sega CD, especially when it comes to background effects. Hopefully, we'll see it. Since there isn't much like Battle Core on the Sega CD, I think we'll see this as well. Giant mech action, sprite scaling, and a great soundtrack round out this excellent addition to the platform's library. Seriously, Sega, Final Fight is a staple of the Sega CD, and to entertain thoughts of releasing the Mini 2 without it is pure insanity. This one needs to be there, plain and simple. KO Flying Squadron was a nice looking shooter with excellent cinematics and a very doable difficulty. I think it fits right at home on the Mini 2. I really don't care which one it is, but I really want a Lunar on this device. Eternal Blue makes the most sense. It was an epic RPG that made owning a Sega CD a thrill when it was originally released. Sega went after some Mickey properties with the first Genesis Mini, so I expect it to show up here as well. Mickey Mania was a great port on the Sega CD, and would make an excellent addition. Even with Night Trap's modern availability, I think Sega scores this one for the Mini 2. It is so entwined with the history of the Sega CD, it really does need to be there. Game Arts is already on board, so if any luck, we'll see Rise of the Dragon. It's not a shoe in since Dynamics developed the original, but there's always hope. This device has to have Road Avenger. This was the one full motion video game I could go back to again and again. Let's hope it makes the cut. I'm putting up a lot of shooters I know, but I also expect Robo Aleste. It's possible Musha could displace it, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Sewer Shark was one of the best-selling games on the Sega CD in the West, so I'm thinking Sega goes after it for sure. It still holds quite a bit of sway in the retro community. This one is a long shot, but my lord do I hope Konami Snatcher is there. The Sega CD had the only official Western release of this title on a home console, so Sega would be wise to celebrate it. If Core Design provides Battle Core, I think we'll be seeing Soul Star as well. This is one of the better looking games on the platform, and it plays quite a bit different from the other shooters available. I think it'd make a great showpiece. I'm really hoping Namco titles get a consideration and Starblade would be a fantastic start. It's not arcade perfect, but still quite fun on the old Sega CD. AH3 Thunderstrike would make the core design trifecta complete. Again, this really showed off the scaling abilities on the Sega CD, and plays different than anything else on the list so far. Europeans love it, and I think Sega knows that. Sega has the rights to Tomcat Alley, so it should be here. This game had the best full-screen live-action video on the Sega CD, and didn't play all that bad either. Vi is a Sims-developed RPG that should be an easy get for Sega. It has a great story and stands on its own as one of the Sega CD's most underrated adventures. And that'd just about do it for the Sega CD selections, so let's move on to the standard Genesis offerings. I am not a fan of Chalk on the Forever Man. This game suffers some serious design flaws, but it does have a following, and I think Sega goes after it. Crusader of Senti has grown in popularity over the last decade or so, and Sega knows that. Look for this one to grab all kinds of attention. Lots of Genesis fans fondly remember Decap Attack, and Sega should be able to score this one easily. It's a reskin too, so Japan could get the alternative. Sega was wise to get Earthworm Jim on the original Mini, and I think they go after Part 2 for this one. It is possible that Special Edition for the Sega CD could replace it, however. One of the glaring omissions from the first Mini was eSWAT, so I'm hoping Sega adds it to this one. This is such an underappreciated gem. 
I really loved the audio-visual presentation, and the gameplay variation really stood out back in 1990. Like Bonanza Brothers, I think Sega goes back in the catalog and pulls game ground. The two-player action holds up, so it's not a throwaway title at all. This is another long shot, but I am really hoping to see Gauntlet 4. Aside from being one of the best sounding Genesis games ever created, it also has some incredible multiplayer action. Sega pulls Outrun for this release, I believe. The Genesis edition was not a bad port at all, and it would cover that racing genre just fine. The collaboration with Game Freak opens up another one of their classics, Pulse Man. This was a great looking action title that could use a bigger audience. Let's hope Sega scored a multi-game deal and snagged it. Ranger X is a big one, and Sega would be unwise to look past it. The unique shooting action of this plays like nothing else on the Genesis. It also happens to look and sound really nice. I was shocked when Sega didn't include Ristar on the original Mini. I don't believe they'll skip it a second time. Snatcher won't be the only Konami property Sega picks up for the Mini 2. Rocket Knight Adventure shows up and delights gamers across the globe. It's a standout 16-bit action title, and Sega will want it to draw as much attention to this new project as possible. Sega had Shinobi 3 on the first Mini, so I think they go Shadow Dancer this time. Looks good, sounds good, plays good. How could it not be here? The first Shining Force delighted fans of the original Mini. That means that Shining Force 2 makes a big showing here. Even with Shining Force CD on the device, I think Sega knows the draw is real. Sega seems to have those Sonic 3 licensing issues sussed, so I think the return of the little blue blur is almost guaranteed with Sonic 3. With any luck, we'll have Knuckles along for the ride. If Namco shows up with Starblade, there is a chance they also contribute one of their Splatterhouse offerings to the Mini 2. Whether it's Part 2 or 3 doesn't really matter. As long as one of them is there, I'll be happy. We were blessed with Streets of Rage 2 on the first Mini, so that means I want Streets of Rage 3 for this one. Maybe Koshiro-san could return and give us an alternate soundtrack. Do we need another Street Fighter? Maybe not, but people love fighting games, and Super Street Fighter 2 played great. You have to have something that uses those six button pads, right? The original Vector Man got his time to shine on the first Mini, and he'll be back in Part 2 to continue his adventure. This is an easy addition for Sega, and I'd be shocked if it wasn't there. As I mentioned earlier, I also expect Sega to drop a couple of surprises in our laps when the rest of the games are announced. When the first Mini was being developed, M2 really wanted to do a port for the Genesis of R-Type Leo, and I think it gets the go-ahead here. They obviously felt they could do it, and their passion will see it through. For our last game, I also expect to see another shocker. Super Strike Trilogy finally gets an official release. This was a combo of the three Strike games for the Sega Genesis, enhanced for the Sega CD. This game was pretty much finished, but it was scrapped at the last minute. Sega still has a good working relationship with EA, and I think there's a chance we see this one. It's a long shot, but would definitely be a welcome addition. That about wraps up my Sega Mega Drive Mini 2 guest list. No doubt we'll see some regional differences in the final list, and I'd love to see Sega surprise us all with some 32X editions. But with the information I have at this moment, this is the best I can do. When we do have a final list, I'll be back with another video covering what was chosen and how I feel about it. I know many of you were hoping for a Saturn or Dreamcast Mini to make an appearance, but I think this product is a step in the right direction for Sega. The Sega CD has not been featured prominently by the company for over 20 years. Heck, it hasn't even been acknowledged much past a Facebook happy birthday post every so often. This will hopefully start a path where Sega begins to recognize its other platforms outside of the Genesis and Mega Drive line. Whatever comes our way, I am still really happy to see those Sega CD titles added to this announcement. During the showcase, the games looked and ran great, so it gives me hope that any lingering emulation issues from the first Mini have been solved. This even has me interested in picking up the little add-on kit 
for the Mini 2. I mean, how can you have a Genesis 2 and no Sega CD2 connected to it? Finally, I'd love to see what you guys want on the Mini 2. Is my list good enough, or did I forget something that you really want to see? Let me know down in the comments. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.